Hey Wompers, in this video I'll be showing you how to create a cute little character combining simple shapes in a way that everybody can create amazing 3D models. This includes a lot of tips and tricks on the way. I'll then also show you how we can turn this into a beautiful little scene and later also finish it off with some lighting. Feel free to follow along with me and let's get started. So first off, let's click on the top bar where we find our basic primitives menu. Here we want to grab a cylinder. If we hover over the side or the edge of the cylinder, we can scale it. And at the right, we have the object's properties menu where we can add some roundness to it. In that way, we can give it a more specific shape instead of just a sphere, which I quite like for this character. At the right top, we can also make change to our color and material. I'll start with going for a light greenish tone for the head. I'll also give it a bit of roughness so it's not too shiny. I am then copying the shape, pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V and scale it up to be a more vertical kind of cylinder. Now at the right in our properties menu we can activate the mirror. If we do that on the x-axis and drag our shape to the right we will have a perfectly symmetrical eyes. Uh, I'm then turning them into a black color and changing the material to be less rough, give it a bit of metalness as well as glass. In that way we really create this shiny effect that eyes usually have. I'm then placing them in the face where I want them to be. You can really experiment with this and the shapes in general because it really changes a lot depending on where you place them, how you rotate them, etc. Um, I'm then copying this shape once more and now I'm rotating it sideways. You can rotate the shape in 45 degrees angles if you hold down shift. I'm then turning the shape into a negative and here we can really see how amazing it is to experiment with the shape language here. And the cool thing is it will fade in the mirror center so in that way we can create some really interesting shapes as well. Um, I'm changing the material to be more rough because uh, I don't want the mouth to be that shiny. And then I'm just copying our eyes one more time and I'm turning this into some blush because I think that makes the character look really cute. So I'm choosing a red pinkish kind of tone for it and just roughly place it under the eyes or where I imagine the cheeks of the character to be. Um, so this is looking nice. Let's turn this into a union and we maybe call it um, the face. We can then close it down. This is basically now a group that we can move together and yeah. Then I'm getting out a new curve primitive and what the first thing that I do with curves is delete the second point, go into the curve settings, increase the density to max and reduce group strength to around 5. I'm then also turning on the mirror again on the x-axis, going to the point 1 setting and here we can drag our shape to the right to see the mirror being working and activated. And you can already see how cute it looks by just having two spheres on the bottom here and how easy it is to create cute little characters in Womp. Um, I'm then giving them a light green tone and increasing roughness. I'm scaling them smaller from the center and placing them roughly where I imagine the legs to start. Now how we work with curves is we hold down Alt or Shift on a Mac and then we just drag out the point and that way we create an automatic copy of the point and we can yeah, scale it or move it somewhere else. Um, I'm then choosing the curve and I'm rotating the legs outwards a little bit. That really creates a more dynamic kind of look um, and not so stiff but more natural. I'm then calling it legs and I'm scaling, uh, selecting everything in the scene list and bring it down to the ground so it's standing on something. Um, now let's create the arms next. So for that I am copying the legs and I'm moving them to the right. Uh, I'm then turning off the mirror because I want to create more, a more dynamic pose by making the arms different. And how the workflow works in Womp is you want to copy things rather than get out completely new shapes because in that way we keep the same material, we keep the position instead of having to select everything again. Uh, we had a little bit of a rotation in there so I turned the value to zero so that makes it easier for us to um, yeah, have the navigation right. Um, so for the arms I'm creating a second point that's bigger 
and I'm creating a third point that's smaller again and I'm moving it kind of upwards. I want to create an arm that looks like it is holding something. I am then also copying this arm just to bring it over to the other side and just by rotating it um, in the other direction in that way we almost um, make it face down as well especially if we give that uh, downwards rotation and navigate it to where this other arm would be. And now we have two different kind of arms that create a more dynamic pose because you don't really want to have everything perfectly symmetrical, right? Um, I'm then getting out a new curve. This time it is cylinder based. I'm dragging down the cylinder and I'm rotating it 90 degrees angle to face upwards. I'm completely adding roundness, which you can find in the point settings of the curve. And I'm adding a darker green tone to start with, um, with a bit of roughness, a bit less here because we want the leaf to be a bit um, shiny. I'm then copying it out, speeding this up a little bit. For curves, you want to work like this. You create a point, you rotate it, then go with the flow and change the material to have some gradients. And yes, that is right. You can change the individual color for each point to create a gradient between the points. So here again, we drag out another point, we rotate it and we bring it into position and go with the flow of the curve. This is how you want to do it. Rotate, bring it into position, go with the flow of the curve, scale it smaller. I'm scaling it quite small at the very end and in that way we create this nice leaf shape here. I'm then copying this leaf two more times and rotate it to be sideways in different directions. And in that way we create this, um, yeah, we make them float over the head of this character, which creates this stylized graphical element that really adds to the overall look, I think. Next up, let's add something that the character is holding. And my idea for the scene is to make it a bit of a rainy scene or it was just raining. And the character is holding something to protect itself from the rain. And I was thinking about a leafarella. What is a leafarella, you might ask? It's an umbrella, but made out of a leaf. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting out a new curve primitive, and here you can see I'm forming it out of a sphere-based um, curve, and I'm giving it a really lovely flow, going from a thick start to a, a smaller or thinner middle part, and going thick at the top again, where I want to connect it to a rounded cylinder. You can simply grab a normal cylinder and make it rounded for that. I'm then gooping it together at the very bottom of the, of the stem here. And then I'm making a copy of the cylinder as well, gooping it with the already existing cylinder to make a bit of a gradient and to define the shape a bit more. I'm then doing the same with a negative cylinder from the top to define the shape even more. Next up, one important element that makes this look really good, I think, is to make another copy of the negative cylinder. And I'm making it a lot smaller but um, longer so I can make a proper cut in it. And I'm also adding some goop strength. I think this makes the leafarella look really lovely and adds some personality to it. So now that we have the character in place, let's turn this into a simple little scene. For that I'm grabbing a new cylinder, I'm scaling it quite big and thin, I add roundness, um, give it a green color and also add some roughness. I want the character to be in a kind of forest environment. For that I'm creating some grass blades next. I'm speeding up this process because it's basically the same technique that we already used for the leaves of the character. I'm starting out quite thin, go a bit thicker and go very thin at the very end of the blade. I'm also changing the color with each point um, that I'm going because I really want that lovely gradient between the points. I'm keeping the roughness fairly low because I want the blades to be shiny from the rain. And the most important thing you need to remember is to copy the point, rotate it, scale it and then go with the flow of the curve by dragging it in the right direction. Now, once you've made a grass of blade, you can also just copy it and rotate it around to create some variety in it. And once you have three blades together, like I have here, you can copy them all together and expand the scene very quickly. You just always want to make sure you make it look a bit different so it's not as repetitive. So next up, I want to add some water droplets or bubbles to the scene. For that, I'm adding a sphere, I'm giving it a light blue color, 
I'm turning down roughness to almost zero and increase glass to around 100. And here we can really see the amazing materials of WAMP and the real-time ray tracing reflections. And we can now combine it with the amazing goop function. So I'm turning this a bit smaller here and I'm gooping the two bubbles together. We just want to make sure they are inside of their own union so that they don't get affected by the ground or other elements in our scene. So I'm then adding just a few more bubbles here and there to really add to the atmosphere as well as have some really cool stylized elements in the scene, which really adds a lot to the overall look of the scene, I think. I'm also turning some on the Leaforella, so they kind of dropped on there and almost dropped down a little bit. So I'm grouping a few of them together here and create that look of, yeah, a raindrop. So then once we're fully happy with our creation, we can come to the presentation part. And for that, we want to turn off the floor grid. And then we go to the top bar to create a new backdrop. And to add to the atmosphere of a rainy kind of scene, I want to go for a medium kind of bluish tone, maybe a bit um, of a desaturated darker tone. And then I also want to change the global lighting. And here really play around with the global lightings because they affect your scene, they affect your materials, your colors, your shadows, basically everything and make it look completely different. I chose the pink sunrise here because I really like how uh, the reflections in the bubble look really colorful. Um, I increased the exposure a little bit and now we also want to add some individual lights because definitely there's something missing still. So I'm adding an uh, individual light here, uh, a spherical one. And the first thing I want to do here is um, to create a bit of a warmer tone on the leaves here to bring some focus on the character because everything looks a bit flat without that. And it also creates another um, nice little gradient to the character as well or to the leaves of it. I'm then also counterparting that almost with um, a cold color in the spherical lights. So you can always play around with the color as well as the luminance on how bright the light is displayed as well. So then once we're fully happy with what our creation looks like, it's time to release it into the wild. So we click on publish on the top right. Um, here we can choose our thumbnail on how it will be displayed on the discover page. We can name it, um, give it a title and also add some hashtags. Those are labels that people can search for and then your creation will appear there. And we can also share it in the WAMP share channel as well as choose our copyright settings if we want other people to be able to remix it or use it for anything or not. We then click on publish and yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. We can't wait to see what your versions will look like and see them on the Discover page. Maybe you also got inspired to create your very own original character. We can't wait to see that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.